Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Israel's military says it has confirmed that Hamas's military chief, Mohammed Daif, was killed in an airstrike in the Gaza Strip last month. Daif was targeted in the strike on a compound in the Khan Yunus area on the 13th of July. Hamas is yet to confirm his death. Here, a video released by the Israeli army, they claim, shows the airstrike. Israel says Daif was one of the figures responsible for planning the 7th of October attacks in southern Israel, in which 1,200 people were killed and 251 taken hostage. Meanwhile, thousands have turned out for the funeral procession in Iran for the head of Hamas's political wing, Ishmael Haniyeh, who was killed in a strike in Tehran. <laughs> Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, led prayers for the Hamas leader, whose body will be buried in Qatar. U.S. media have quoted Iranian officials as saying the supreme leader has ordered a direct attack against Israel, which it says was responsible for the attack on Iranian soil. Israel has not commented on the assassination directly. Families of hostages held by Hamas since its attack on Israel on October 7th have marked the 300th day of their loved ones in captivity. Some family members blocked a main highway in Tel Aviv with the number 300 painted in yellow on the road, while others painted the number in red on an overhead bridge. Others gathered outside the city's museum, a plaza that became known as the Hostages Square, where a table was set up for the 115 hostages still held by the Islamist group Hamas that rules the Gaza Strip. The U.S. Department of Defense says three of the men accused of plotting the September 11, 2001 attacks on the U.S. have entered into a pre-trial agreement. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and two of his accomplices have agreed to plead guilty. They've been held for years at Guantanamo Bay without charge. Details of the deal have not been announced, but U.S. news outlets say the men will plead guilty in exchange for the prosecution agreeing not to seek the death penalty. Nearly 3,000 people in New York, Virginia and Pennsylvania were killed in the attacks, which later sparked the invasions of Afghanistan and Iraq. Indian soldiers are rushing to complete construction of a metal bridge to connect the worst affected area in the landslides that struck India's Kerala. The search for survivors and bodies has entered its third day in a disaster that has killed at least 178 people. Drone footage shows the extent of the landslides and the massive destruction to property and farmlands in the district of Wayanad in Kerala. Heavy rain sent torrents of mud, water and tumbling boulders downhill, burying or sweeping people away, living in villages to their deaths as they slept. A court in Guinea has sentenced the former military ruler Musa Dadis Kamara to 20 years in prison for crimes against humanity. The charges stemmed from one of the worst massacres in the nation's history, the killing of more than 156 people after troops opened fire at a rally held in September 2009 to demand a return to civilian rule. Kamara took power in a coup when longtime President Lansana Conte died in 2008, but he fled the country after surviving an assassination attempt not long after the massacre. He returned from exile in Burkina Faso in September 2022 to face justice, insisting that he was innocent. And a new AI robot called Claws is hoping to push the boundaries of farming in a bid to make the industry more sustainable. This tech startup has created a farming robot dubbed Claws, or Concentrated Light Autonomous Weeding and Scouting, that combines artificial intelligence and robotics. Weeding is done using a concentrated light technology, which is different from a laser, that targets and eliminates weeds without damaging surrounding crops or soil. It's hoped it will reduce greenhouse gas emissions that could be released from soil disturbance. Our patented technology uses concentrated light, uh, so the best way of describing it is a, a schoolboy with a magnifying glass. So it concentrates the light onto a small focal point on the mirror stem, the growing point of the weed, and delivers a small pulse of energy, which is enough to kill the weed. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos.